Hi guys and welcome to this video on ratio and proportion, part of our general maths course here in Australia. Now don't worry if you are not an Australian and don't worry if you have no idea what a general maths course is. Ratio and proportion are universal. Maths is, as I have been told a number of times, a constant lol. Now my name is Darren, I'm the Maths Guru and it is really good to see you. If you aren't already aware, there is a website where all these videos can be found and notes downloadable and exam questions and all that type of stuff at mathsguru.com. Uh, if you are watching me on uh, YouTube, it would be deeply and gratefully appreciated if you can just click the subscribe button. Why? Well, it just lets me know you're watching. No one watches YouTube videos for maths, and uh, it's actually quite a lonely existence sitting here. I'm never going to be rich, and I'm never going to be famous. But just the fact that you click, and if you can let your mates know uh, these videos are here, it would be deeply, deeply grateful as well. I try and make maths as interesting and as humorous as I possibly can to take away from the dull, <laughs> monotonous stuff that comes up a bit later on. Okay, so learning objectives. By the end, we're going to know what a ratio is. Express quantities as ratios. Understand how to write a ratio as a fraction. And how to write a fraction as a ratio. Yes, what we do forwards in maths, we must be able to do backwards. Recap. Now, a lot of these videos are fairly standalone. Yes, I've done loads of videos uh, for this particular section that all have all sorts of stuff to do with ratios, percentages, fractions, decimals, areas, all sorts of stuff. Um, and they are there all on MathsGuru.com. So head over there and watch them uh, if you need to. Uh, but alternatively, continue watching this one. All right, what is a ratio? Now, I looked it up on Google. Uh, uh, Google, uh, this is what I get. A ratio is a noun. Always good to know it's a noun. Uh, the quantitative relation between two amounts showing the number of times one value contains or is contained within the other. <sighs> Sometimes a dictionary doesn't help, does it really? So I wonder why we can't just write things in real English. And so basically I did another Google search and came up with the idea that ratio is how much of one thing there is in comparison to another. Okay. So, story time. When I was younger, uh, uh, my sister and I used to go and see my nan, uh, uh, well, we used to call her Granny, uh, who is no longer with us. And uh, basically, she um, didn't have very much, uh, sadly. Um, she, uh, but what she did have, she would um, have a little purse. And at the end of each week, she would put any of her one penny pieces and two penny pieces into our purse. And that when my sister and I went to see her, um, we'd be able to separate out the purse. Now, me being older than my sister and obviously financially wise and slightly devious, um, uh, my sister would be very happy for me to sort the coins out. So I'd be going, oh, okay then, here we go. Uh, there is a one coin for you and there is a one coin for me. Now, my sister, being none the wiser, was pretty much like, oh, this is good, yes. What she didn't realise was that I was keeping the bigger coins and she was keeping the smaller coins, which if you are British or have any idea of the British uh, money system, the smaller ones are the one penny pieces and the bigger ones are the two penny pieces. And I'm hanging my head in shame. <sighs> I defrauded my sister at a young age. Now, basically, uh, what I was doing there, believe it or not, was splitting money into a ratio. Uh, I was basically getting two pennies and she was getting one penny for each one. So if I was to say uh, Darren, and I will say sister to save her blushes, then what I was getting was, oh, notice the two dots. For every two pence I was getting, my sister was getting one pence. And that's exactly what I was doing. I was splitting things in a ratio of two to one. Now, if you look at it another way, I was getting twice as much as my sister was. Yeah, for every single time I gave a coin to each of us, I was getting too much. Now, again, it's really important to notice that every time I was taking money out of my nan's purse, I was taking out three pence. So adding together these ratios is going to be really helpful in a later video when we have to start splitting things into ratios. But what is a ratio? A ratio has a defined order. So it's important to know that when you split things into a ratio, what are you splitting? And as I said here, there is Darren and sister. Those are the titles of the ratios. There are numbers in ratios. And the most important part are those two dots in between. That's what tells us it's a ratio. So every time you write a ratio now, number, dot, dot, number. And interestingly, you don't have to have just two numbers in a ratio. You can have lots of numbers in ratios. Three, dot, dot, one, dot, dot, four. This could be, for example, I don't know, the number of people in a classroom who've got blonde, uh, red, and brown hair. Very small classroom, by the way. But that could also be a ratio. Now, lots of things in life can be written as ratios. And obviously, the most obvious one that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis is probably the number of boys and girls in your classroom. So imagine I have a year 10 class of 26 students. 
later on in videos coming up, that value there, that number of students is gonna be very, very important to you. There are 14 girls and 12 boys. Now, first things first, notice the order there. They've said 14 girls, 12 boys. Express the number of girls, two boys as a ratio. Right, so the question says it has to be girls to boys. That is the order. I know now that I can write a ratio with two dots in the middle because that's what a ratio is. How many girls do I have? 14. How many boys do I have? 12. And ka -ching, that's the question. Now, obviously, later on, we have to be able to simplify ratios. That's not necessarily my final answer. Later on, it might ask me to cancel this down or show it in a simpler way. And we can do that using the work we have from fractions. And for those of you who want to know, that would be written as seven dot dot six. Can you work out why? Well, hopefully you realize that both of those numbers can be divided by two. And then once I get to seven and six, I can't take it any lower, All right? So that is a bit of an aside for a video coming up. As I say, we can write ratios with different numbers. This seems like a long question, doesn't it? But we've just got to pick out the information. A survey of the same group of 26 students showed that, year, uh, that 10 students walked to school, 11 came by public transport, and five were driven by their parents. Express as a ratio, thank you very much, dot, 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 the number of students who walked to school to the number of students who came by public transport to the number of students who were driven to school. Now again, every time I see the word to, I know that I'm gonna write two dots. <laughs> I know. But again, the order here is important. Express the ratio of the number of students who walked. So I'm gonna write walked, he says thinking he was writing the word walked, but for some reason PowerPoint was having a completely different idea. So let's try that one again. So walked to, what did it say then? Uh, public transport, all right, public to driven. And don't always expect the question to write it in the right order. So let's just check. So 10 students walked to school, 10, dot, dot, 11 came by public transport, dot, dot and five were driven by their parents. Now in this situation, I wouldn't be able to cancel those down if I wanted to try and simplify or show a simplified ratio, because there isn't a number that divides into 10, 11, and five. Well, there is, there's a number one, but that won't necessarily help you. So in this situation, that would be my ratio. Stuff's really easy, yeah? Now we can write ratios as fractions, and I slightly disagree with the book here, but um, with the, the essentials or the Cambridge General Maths textbook. So I'm gonna show you the way I would do it. Uh, this is what makes sense in my head. Um, and we'll, we'll sort of leave that Cambridge one there for the moment. Ratios can be written as fractions, a cordial bottle. Cordial, are you aware that in America they don't sell cordial? There's nowhere in the world could I walk around and find some lemon squash or some orange squash. Anyway, a cordial bottle has instructions to mix. One part cordial with four parts water. Now, if you've ever mixed paint, uh, and you want to try and sort of get a various color. You go into Bunnings, what do you notice? You put a pot of paint under there and they squirt various colors in, in different ratios. And that's what actually creates a different color. The different colors they've got in those things, red, green, and blue, uh, to make the different colors of paint. So one part cordial to four parts water. Express this as a ratio. Right, so be careful. I've got cordial dot dot water. That's my ratio. So I've got one part cordial to four parts water. And there we go, so that's as a ratio. If we now move on, let's think of it as a fraction. So I'm gonna go back and say cordial, dot, dot, water. And it was one part cordial to four parts water. Now for me, if I've got a glass of water and I'm putting one, port of, uh, one part of cordial in and four parts of water, then how many total parts do I have? I have five parts. Now by adding those together, it tells me that I've got five parts of which one of those parts is cordial. So I reckon I have one fifth of my thing is cordial, and I reckon that four fifths is water. Now again, that's not really what the textbook does, but later on splitting things into ratios, uh, you do have to add these things together. So this five parts coming from the one plus the four, actually comes in really, really useful later. And again, if I was to draw a glass and I've got one part of cordial, and I've got four parts of water, then I do think I've got one fifth of cordial and four fifths of water. Okay, that's, that's just my view and that's how I would very much be teaching it. 
believe it or not, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully it made sense to you. If it didn't, go back and watch it again. Uh, if you liked it and you thought it was useful for your mates, uh, send them out as well. If you can, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Again, I'm not going to be rich, I'm not going to be famous, but it just lets me know that you're watching. And mathsguru.com is there for downloadable notes. I'm done. I'll see you in another video. Take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.